name is Sam Hart, and I'm the Director General of the Abia State Marketing and Quality Management Agency. At the onset of the global COVID-19 pandemic, the Governor of Abia State, Dr. Okeze Victor Ekwazo, gave a charge to our Abia tailors and artisans to rise up and meet the global shortage in face masks and other PPEs. I am proud to announce to you that Abia tailors and artisans have been able to produce over 1 million face masks which has been distributed around Nigeria. ABA has the capacity to bridge the global shortage in PPE, nose masks and other medical essentials and we are here for you. You can reach us on phone number 0817-777-1306. Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode of the Osasu Show. In today's program, we have the former African Union representative to the United States, Ambassador Arikana Chihombori Kwao. She will be speaking to us about how Africa can reposition itself post-COVID-19. Don't go anywhere, it promises to be a very enlightening interview. Welcome back to the Osasu Show. Joining me now is Her Excellency Ambassador Arikana Chihombori Kwao. Welcome to today's program, Your Excellency. Thank you for having me, my dear. You're most welcome. First of all, I must commend you and um, thank you for the relentless effort you have put in in speaking for Africans world over. You popularly spoke about the French continuous colonization of African countries, particularly in West and Central Africa. This led to the um, stopping of the CFA franc being used in most of these countries. In December of 2019, these eight countries adopted the echo currency. However, critics have still claimed that France still has its tutelage on these African countries because the eco is still backed by the euro. And France is also um, making sure that there are also the um, people standing in for the currency. What do you have to say about that? Well, what I can say is thank you for having me, my dear. I appreciate all the work that you're doing uh, to continue the conversation. Uh, really, we're at a critical time in the history of Africa, uh, and it is your world. You, the, young, uh, the youth of Africa, this is your world. Our job as your elders, we know we have messed up this Africa for you, but we would like to fix it and make it right. If we can't finish the job, at least when we leave this earth, we want to be able to say to you children, this is what we have done. There was a problem in our village, and this is where you need to pick up. Going to the issue of the echo with France, what is needed is complete separation. What President Macron is suggesting to have an echo that is going to be pegged to the euro is totally unacceptable. To have an echo that when leaders of the African countries want to trade, all the trades have got to go through the French Central Bank and then pass on whichever country is wishing to trade with, the, with those uh, former French uh, colonies. That is also unacceptable. What is needed is complete separation. African leaders are quite capable of handling their own affairs. African countries, especially ECOWAS, they are quite capable of handling their own, their own currency. They are already having uh, discussions. The heads of state are having their own discussions. They have set up their own parameters as to what it's going to take for them to be ready to have their own single West African currency. France just needs to stop interfering. This is a program for the African heads of state in, Afri in, uh, in West Africa. So for France to run in and think they can just steal the program away from the African heads of state, it's not going to happen. Ghana has already let them know. Nigeria has already let them know. So this is not going to happen. They can try to play games again, 
But we need to let uh, President Macron know, Macron know that we are not stupid. We know exactly what game he's playing. It's not going to work. The youth of Africa, the children of Africa, we may have been asleep for far too long, but President Macron needs to know once and for all that the children of Africa are waking up. Enough is enough. The games that they have played with us over the centuries, those games are over. They need to realize that this is a new game. They, better need, they need to strategize because the Africans are not going to take it anymore. So go, those games of trying to put in this puppet uh, euro, renamed ECHO, is not going to work. Ambassador, should we at least pat ourselves on the back? The fact that you clearly advocated that the representative of France sitting on the board of the West African Central Bank should be removed and, it was re and um, that representative was removed. Should we at least pat ourselves on the back for the fact that you also advocated that their currency, this CFA, should be changed and it was changed? Should we pat our, uh, ourselves on the back for this achievement? Or is there still so much more that we need to fight for? No, we are not ready to pat ourselves on the back yet. A lot more work is yet to be done. You got to understand that France is going to be a tough nut to crack. Uprooting France out of Africa, period, is going to be a tall order. Let's make no mistake about that. For France, getting out of Africa is a do or die. For them, without Africa, France is a worse than a third world country. So we know that. What is needed from France is to treat Africa fairly. Come to the table and treat the Africans fairly. Africa is a huge continent. Africa could, be, could feed all of China, all of India, all of Europe. We could even house the, the citizens of those countries. That's how humongous and that's how rich the African continent is. We are simply asking that those who engage Africa from outside Africa come to Africa with your suitcases, chock full of humility, honor, and respect for the Africans. We will roll out the red carpet for you. But continued exploitation of the continent is no longer going to be tolerated. And for those who have gotten away with it for centuries, we want to send a message that is loud and clear, that enough is enough. The game is over. Come to Africa and treat the Africans fairly. All we are asking is that they treat Africa and her children fairly, with respect, and do what is right, and do what is just. Hmm. Do what you would want done for your own children in, in Europe or wherever you are coming from. The little girls and the little boys in France, whatever their needs are, are also the needs of the little girls and little boys in Africa. We are not going to sit around anymore and watch our children starving to death. We are not going to sit around anymore and watch our women die while giving birth to another life. That time is over now. We can no longer play politics. We can no longer play diplomacy. How do we have a diplomatic conversation with a, with a master who has never left? We are under the table while the master is sitting on the table in our house, eating our food that we would have saved him. And then from under the table, the master is dictating that we should have a diplomatic conversation while he's on the table and we are under the table. That is not a conversation that can be diplomatic. In fact, we should be beating up France. We should have been beating up France a long time ago. And yet we're still under the table and begging for them to drop a, a few crumbs. And while we are under the table, they're telling us how we should, we should organize ourselves in order to divide the few crumbs. No, France needs to know once and for all that what needs to happen is that France needs to come to the table as an equal partner. We are more than happy to negotiate with France as an equal partner. And France must understand Africa is big enough. There's enough for all of us. There's no need for the French companies to be so greedy. There's no need for France to be so greedy. Africa is big enough. And our hearts as Africans are big enough that we are ready to welcome the world. So, but they must come to Africa with respect for the Africans. Just like we go to their countries with respect for their people. We are not asking them for anything that they would not ask of us when we come to their countries. Exactly, we are demanding Ambassador. respect. Yes. You come to Africa, you better respect the Africans. Most and definitely. that's all we are asking. Yes, permit me to interject. I think one of the most shocking 
uh, data that you released during one of your conversations was the fact that 50% of the uh, reserves in these uh, West African countries were domiciled in France. But during this recent meeting with the heads of state and President Macron, he said that that would no longer happen, that all the money in the um, West African and Central African central banks will remain as is. Is that enough or is there more we need to do in preserving Africa's wealth for Africans in particular? Well, what I would like to see is the action speaks louder than, than words. He made that proclamation. I have not heard anything yet that is saying the heads of state are no longer de de required to deposit their reserves with the Central Bank of France. So if you have more information on that, please enlighten me. It's one thing to make that proclamation. It's another thing to actually actualize it. Until I see it in writing, until I know that the heads of state are no longer depositing their finances, uh, their financial uh, reserves with France, it's just words coming from President Macron. We must actual actualize his words. We cannot overemphasize the importance of good leadership because women like yourself held this sensitive position of African Union permanent representative to the U.S. You use this platform to shine light on critical issues such as this. The world, even those of us living here in Africa, on the continent, in Nigeria, did not know this was going, us, going on in our neighboring countries. But you used your position to shine light on this very sensitive issue. So you can definitely agree with me that leadership is very important. What can African leaders do at this point, given the global pandemic, the COVID-19 is affected economies, is affected the way we interact socially. What can African leaders do now to reposition itself from a place of strength, from a place of power, to ensure that our continent thrives once and for all, and we don't just pay, pay lip service to the fact that, yes, we're rich in natural resources, yes, we're a blessed continent, but we start to exemplify these blessings given to us? Well, first of all, I, uh, I, I'm constantly reminding everybody uh, uh, to go back to the Berlin Conference. If, you, if we understand why they met in Berlin, it's easy to understand where Africa is today. If we understand what happened in 1884, from November 1884 to February of 1885, we will understand why we are today. We will, if we also understand what took place during those four months, it will also disgust us to say 136 years later, a strategy that was put in place to keep us forever defeated and dominated remains in place today. And we actually seem to have completely forgotten about it. We have normalized it. We have accepted it. Berlin Conference intentionally broke us up into the tiny little economies that cannot survive on their own. Let me reiterate what I've always said. How can Togo negotiate? with the European Union? How does Djibouti negotiate with China? How does Central African Republic negotiate with the United States? We must learn something from the United States. The United States understood that as Delaware, the state of Delaware cannot survive, as the state of Illinois alone cannot, cannot survive, California, even California and Texas, the biggest states in, in the United States, they knew their strength was in the numbers and in their unity. So they came together and created the United States of America. Africa should be a continent that needs to grow up to be like the United States. We must come together and be the Africa that we were before the Berlin Conference. Berlin Conference was a strategy designed to see to it that we will forever be chasing our tails as tiny little economies. We must come together. That is why our Pan-African Fathers met in 1963, precisely to put together, to rebuild that which was destroyed by the colonizers by breaking us up during the Berlin Conference. Sadly, they did not succeed. It took us 56 years since 1963 to finally come up with what we are now calling the African Continental Free Trade Area, which was signed in, 19, uh, in 2018 by the African Heads of State. 
implementation of that decision was supposed to be in July, thanks to COVID, it's been pushed back to January. When we come together as Africa, when we go to the negotiating table, as Africa, the continent, we are a powerhouse. We are a heavyweight. And we belong on the world stage with other heavyweight boxers. But to honestly think that Togo can go to the world market as Togo, that is ridiculous, it is laughable, and it is unbelievable that for 135 years, we have allowed this stupidity to go on. How does Djibouti go to the world stage and claim sovereignty standing next to the United States, standing next to China, standing next to the European Union, standing next to India? Djibouti is going to be swallowed. It is just that simple. And we Africans sit back and complain about why Djibouti is not doing this, why Togo is not doing this, why Malawi is not doing this. These are little boys being forced being thrown in the heavyweight boxing ring every day. Let's understand our Africa from the root. Let's not be forced to complain about the leaves of this tree and the flowers of this tree, which are going to come and go one season after the other and completely disregard the root causes of why Africa is where it is today. So to answer your question, what Africa needs is unity is an Africa speaking with one voice. None of the former French colonies can fight France on their own. It's only when they come together as West Africa, when Africans come together as, as Central Africa, but even better, when we come together as the continent, can we take a position and push back in a manner that we can actually succeed. Now, I have to say, uh, my young daughter, that that time is around the corner. Because the African youth are waking up. The Africans are saying enough is enough. We've been asleep for far too long. We are waking up from our slumber of centuries. Yes, granted, we were systematically put there. We were systematically brainwashed. But the game is up and the Western world and now the Eastern world, they must also wake up and smell the coffee. That they can no longer continue this game with the old, with the old rules. It is a new game that is calling for new rules of engagement. We are open, we are Africans, we have a huge heart. This is who we are, and we are ready to accommodate anybody that's going to come to us with respect. That is all we are asking. We are asking that they respect us, we are asking that they treat us fairly. These unfair trade policies can no longer be tolerated. Hmm. So my hope is, come January next year, we can officially implement the African continental free trade area. So our Africa, united, can go to the world stage as one customs union. Now we are talking of a superpower. Now we are talking of a powerhouse. United, nobody can mess with us. So that is the answer. That is the solution to Africa's problems. But to try and deal with these issues on a national level, it's never going to work. We are forever going to be chasing our tails, which is precisely where they want us to be, and they have succeeded. So to those who con contrived the Berlin Conference, I say to you from your graves, wherever you are, congratulations, job well done. 135 years later, the children of Africa are still chasing, we are still chasing our tails. Ambassador Arikana, understanding the root cause to any problem is one step towards fixing it. So I um, thank you so much for clearly elucidating and explaining the root cause of Africa's problems. But would you also consider the lack of capable leadership as an endemic issue across Africa? We talk about the issue of corruption across African leaders. We talk about the issue of ineptitude, the issue of basic education for even most of these leaders. You hear the conversations that most of these leaders have and you wonder, are they even educated enough to hold this position of power? So what is the solution, homegrown solutions that we as Africans can prefer to pick the right leaders? Because we see a lot of thugging and violence during the um, election 
exceptions. And anybody who has the money, the financial cap capacity, just assumes that power of leadership without having the requisite knowledge and self-composure to actually attain that level of power. So what can we do as Africans, African youth, people passionate about this continent, to elect the right leaders? We understand that the root cause has been decided over 135 years ago, but what can we do as a people to change the course of things, to ensure that we have capable men and women at the helm of affairs to lead this continent forward? Let me give you an example, my daughter, of you and I on a journey uh, and a few other, and a few of your friends, and we're lost in the forest. And in our way, in our efforts to go home, we go on, we pick up the wrong lane. Instead of going east, we are going west. It doesn't matter how much strategizing we do. We are on a losing path. We are not going home. Until we find our way and turn around and be on the right path going east, that is the only way we are going to go home. Through the Berlin Conference and through the policies they put in place when we got our independence in the late 50s and early 60s, where they intentionally kept the economic liberation from us, gave us limited political liberation. And I'm saying limited because they still continue to control the politics of the land through their various conniving means. We are not in control of our destiny. It's like you and I, my daughter, like I said, we are trying to go home. We are lost in the forest. We are going west when we should be going east. First and foremost, Africa must be on the right path. You can win all the fights you want to win. If you are on a losing, losing path, you are still going down. You can win all the fights you want. You are going, riding in a derailing train, they're still going to go down. What Africa needs, I am not saying we do not have problems with corruption. Don't get me wrong. Corruption is a serious problem, and we must address it vigorously. However, when I look at the issues of leadership, if I were to simplify the conversation and say, let's talk about our issues as from scale of 1 to 10, I would put leadership around 5, 6. Why? Until France can leave the $500 billion on the continent, until all the other colonizers can stop extracting all these minerals out of Africa to the tune of billions, until illicit funds are stopped from getting out of Africa, until the, the, uh, the, the looting of uh, uh, the illegal mining, the, the trade in, uh, in, 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 in plants and wildlife, all these illegal activities that are taking out of Africa trillions of dollars combined, they want us to not talk about it. And another big one are those safe havens from all the multinationals who are working in Africa. They have existed, majority of them, even prior to independence. They do not pay taxes. The average African on the street is paying taxes. These multinational corporations are not paying taxes using these safe havens. Again, billions of dollars are getting out of Africa. Allow me to put things in perspective. When you put all this corruption from outside together, you are talking trillions of dollars getting out of Africa that we are being told not to talk about. They have done a great job at making sure that the Africans don't understand the intricacies of what they are doing, the games that they are playing. All they want us to force us to believe is that corruption is your only problem, that leadership is your only problem. No, on a scale of 1 to 10, yes, leadership is an issue. In some cases, not all. Let me make that clear. Let's not paint Africa with one blanket, one brush. No, there are many African heads of state who are doing very well for their people. We cannot just blame it all on corruption. All of Africa is corrupt. That is wrong, and we must refuse it and deny it and call it out. If you want to talk about a corrupt situation in a particular country, then talk about that particular situation. But don't take that one particular situation and extrapolate it throughout the continent. That is wrong, and we will not accept it. 
Thank you so much, Ambassador Arikana Chihumbori Kwao, for your time. I truly appreciate it. Women like yourself are an inspiration to young people across the continent like me who look up to you, your boldness, your eloquence, and your passion for the African continent. Thank you so much for your time. That's it for today's program. Don't forget to follow us on social media at The Osasa Show, at TOS TV Network, at The Osasa Show Foundation, and at Osasa Ibn on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. To read news on current affairs and sustainable development across Africa, visit our website, www.tostvnetwork.com. To get involved with our foundation's work, you can visit our website, www.theosasashowfoundation.org. I'll see you same time, same place next week. And until then, keep practicing social distancing, washing your hands and taking good care of yourself. God bless you.